Season 3 of the Options Save Lives podcast is brought to you with the support of our presenting sponsor, R Street Institute, and is hosted by Executive Director Jenny Williamson. So thank you so much, Andy, for uh, agreeing to come onto our podcast and share your story and talk about some of the struggles that you had with alcohol and how you overcome them and moved forward using the Sinclair method. So why don't we start with, why don't you just introduce yourself um, and just give a little bit about your background? For sure. Yeah, so uh, Andy Matheson, I grew up in in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, worked, for, worked for the phone company, various phone companies for, uh, for several years. Uh, we retired a, f- a few years ago. Um, but uh, al- alcohol was always very present in, uh, in, in my family. My father was a Norwegian sailor. And, and so with growing up in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, there was bars on every, on every corner. And, and that's just, that's just what people did. That was, a, that was just a, a way of life. So I didn't, uh, I didn't jump right into that. But over time, that became a, became a regular thing uh, to do, to experiment with, with alcohol, to experiment with, with beer and, uh, and other spirits. And, and, uh, and, and so I did that. Um, probably not, not an issue in, uh, in the teenage years, in 20s and 30s, but it kind of progressed as I, uh, as I got older and working and raising a family and probably, probably more into, uh, into my 40s than uh, I was really into the uh, uh, alcoholic uh, uh, phase of my uh, being, if you will. That's, that's when things really, really took off. And, uh, and then you become what a lot of people talk about is, uh, is a functional alcoholic. You're able to, uh, you're able to you go to work, you're able to do things. You're, you're, uh, you're not getting DUIs, even though you should be getting DUIs, but you're, you're escaping uh, a lot of that. But as the progression of alcoholism continues, it gets, uh, as a lot of us know, it gets worse and worse. And, uh, and eventually, uh, later in life, and in, uh, in really probably more in the 60s or so, and, uh, then, uh, then experimenting, experimenting, but actually uh, you know, drinking, uh, starting in the day, starting in the daytime. So when you start in the daytime, and then you're kind of drinking all day long, and then uh, and then alcohol becomes uh, um, your main focus in life. And as Claudia Christian said, now the monster has you. So the monster, monster had me, and so I, uh, I struggled with that for uh, for a lot of years. In my forties, uh, my wife knew I had an issue. I uh, did, did lose a lose a job. I've always bounced back and got other, other jobs, but uh, losing the job basically it was it was really alcoholism, alcoholism, and padding the expense account, that, that kind of stuff too. So uh, at that time, then I uh, tried AA. So I spent a good year in AA, nothing wrong with AA. It was good to um, stay sober for a while, but the uh, alcohol deprivation effect, as we all talk about, that it leads me back to a, to a drinking again, then you try it again. And then uh, and maybe it's not as, not as bad, but then it, then it kind of creeps up again and, and so on. So I spent uh, yeah, five years in New England with, with that job and then moved back to, uh, to New Jersey. Uh, and then, uh, then an issue before, before I retired, about three years before I retired, I was getting uh, um, drinking with uh, an open container in, the, in, a, in, a, in a car in a company that I worked for. And I got pulled over and uh, that... Uh, Open container. I didn't uh, didn't get a DUI, but I got an open container, a ticket, uh, which then led to early retirement, which which was fine anyway. I was old enough anyway, um, and then from there went uh, went back to AA for a good year or so too. And uh, AA was very good, learning the steps of AA and uh, finding a good sponsor and uh, talking about a lot of baggage in life that that, that a lot of us have and. But still, the alcohol, alcohol deprivation effect is there. Uh, so I did that for uh, this was um, this was uh, 2020. So uh, 20, uh, 2020 and uh, 2020, early 2020 to till about early uh, 2021 February, and then I started experimenting online, uh, like a lot of us, I guess, do. 
trying to find other alternatives to alcoholism. Is there a, is this a medication for alcoholism? Is there something uh, uh, something else something else to do? And then I came across, uh, like a lot of us have, I guess, you know, Claudia Christian's uh, tape, um, uh, one one little pill. Um, so so look, looked at that, and then uh, I found out about um, the Sinclair method. Found out about uh, naltrexone, and um, didn't didn't tell my wife about it. I kind of wanted want to do my own thing, and so I. Um, I uh, was looking at uh, getting naltrexone uh, um, over in Europe and places like that because uh, because my, I went to my regular doctor and, and told him about the Sinclair method and, and he uh, he wouldn't support it. He didn't he didn't know of anybody who did that and not wanting to write a prescription. Maybe felt uh, um, he'd be liable for something. And uh, so he says, "Well, okay, well I'll go and do my own thing." So uh, I knew it wasn't going to be a problem. With getting it here in here in New Jersey, so I sought out uh, a nurse practitioner that dealt with AUD. Made an appointment uh, with with that with that person. Went down, told him my story, like I'm telling you my story, and uh, he had no problem. Wrote me a script for 30 tablets for uh, for, for naltrexone, 50, 50 milligrams, and, uh, and then from there I came back and 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 I started uh, started working that, but kind of not working it the right way. Because I was still drinking the way I was drinking, which was uh, very heavily uh, progressing in life. I was drinking two handles of scotch uh, a week. It's a lot, a lot of scotch, and hiding it in my basement. So starting the now starting with the Sinclair method, uh, it was starting with naltrexone. I would uh, take a tablet in the morning and uh, I don't know, let's say seven eight o'clock or something, and then go down in the basement and start and start chugging scotch, and then doing that all day long, you know? and uh, as a lot of us know, when you're drinking right through the, uh, right through the naltrexone wall, you can learn about later that, you know, you know, maybe I felt a little something, but it really wasn't much. So the, so the reduction in drinking wasn't, uh, wasn't a lot. So that was my secret drinking that I was doing for a good couple of weeks, uh, going back to the store and hiding it in, uh, in various places, the basement to hide in cabinets and stuff. And, uh, but eventually, uh, my wife caught my wife caught me. She probably said, "You know, you, you do suspect people when you you're, you're going to be uh, naturally smelling of, of alcohol, no matter what you do." And uh, so she uh, suspected that, and then found that the uh, the bottles that I had in the basement, and then exposed the bottles and, and and stood them up on top of the dryer, and it says, "Okay, well, I guess the jig is up now. So let me uh, let me let me see what I can do, and uh, you know, take the take the bottles out of the basement and." Uh, uh, and then talk to her about about what what I'm doing. Um, and so so I got her uh, interested in, in TSM. Uh, told her about uh, the meetings that that I was going to the online meetings, and then uh, and then she spent this time time when Bruce Bruce Rose was around. Bruce Rose was doing. Uh, was doing little little stints there, little uh, uh, daily things that lasted for a while with for family and friends to learn about to learn about uh, TSM, to learn about naltrexone, and she was very interested in that. that you know, as Bruce describes it, it's a neurological imbalance in the brain, and so uh, so to uh, to take a good interest in that was uh, was very beneficial. Yeah. As having a, a family member, in my case, having a wife that's. Uh, that can learn about it and believe in it and then support you in it was uh, was was really vital. So anyway, so the uh, scotch out of the basement. And so now uh, trying to drink, uh, <laughs> drink like a gentleman. I'm trying to uh, now now drink more um, with a conscious effort of, of letting letting the medication work and, and see what I can do. And uh, I didn't keep a log right right in the beginning, but uh, within a couple of weeks, I started doing that. But I was I was drinking instead of secretly drinking. I was we would I was drinking in uh, in, in front of her. In the beginning it was uh, it was kind of painful because uh, I'm drinking water glasses of scotch, ice, and drinking. So, but it but I was still drinking less than what I was doing if I was chugging, uh, which I was doing you know, down down in the basement. So getting that out in the open, exposing that, talking to my wife, uh, getting her support with that, and this is what I want to do. 
and uh, she thought it was very interesting, and and, and she thought it was uh, yeah, so it would probably work, which was very good. And of course, it, then it did work. And so I, uh, I was definitely reducing the, the intake. But then also with uh, with Ria Health and with meetings with Ria Health, they mentioned if you'd like to move further along with uh, with TSM and uh, alcohol reduction to move to beer or wine. So I had no problem with doing that. I you know I, I enjoyed good German beer and uh, white wine and. So I did that. I got away from the scotch and, and moved to beer or wine, and, uh, and then that progressed even uh, even further. So this was so starting in, in end of fe end of February, so into March and April, kind of kind of moved right along. March, April, May, still still drinking every day, but drinking less. And then listening uh, to um, Katie Lane's YouTube. Um, uh, little ditties that she had uh, last last summer. I uh, had a lot of those. Listen, listen to a lot of that, and uh, then starting with uh, probably in the, the May June time frame, uh, uh, starting alcohol free days. So starting alcohol free days. So you start with one a week, and then then it wasn't too bad, and then another week two, and so I was able to move along with that, uh, and still uh, with with drinking either 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 beer or wine. And I found very, I found it very comfortable just to have a couple of beers. That was really, that was really sufficient as I, as I moved along. Yeah. So, so that's yeah, that's kind of my my journey. Yeah. Since then, I uh, uh, continued that for uh, for quite a while. Uh, I uh, and I never quit drinking. I still drink, but it's really only that. It really only stays within uh, within a couple of drinks. It's always always good to take the uh, the, uh, the naltrexone. Sometimes I don't wait the full hour, but I always take the naltrexone. And then after after being you know this amount of time from uh, now a now a year almost, it's uh, I'm uh, very comfortable with just having a, a couple of drinks, take, taking a tablet, having a I actually feel like a little intoxicated after having like a, a couple of drinks, which is a good thing because that's what regular people feel like. So I've become a I've become a, a what Claudia Christian calls a, a normie, I believe, and so, uh, and so that's so that's 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 kind of where where I'm at. I, I no longer have a fear of alcohol. I have alcohol in my house. I've got uh, beer and, and and wine in the refrigerator, and uh, and I still got the, I still got a very nice uh, twelve year old scotch or like that. But it doesn't it doesn't call me. I don't wake up in the morning uh, you know looking for it. I can. I can take it or leave it. I still enjoy drinking. It doesn't take the naltrexone. Doesn't take the joy out of drinking. You can still drink the beer, the beer and the wine and the scotch. All taste the same. Some people talk about the uh, they have an adverse effect to, to it, but for me, it's a uh, it's been fine. I'm really uh, enjoying this this new life. This really is a new life. Uh, you know, free of of alcohol, free of AUD. The AUD brain is dormant. And the idea is to keep it dormant and and then stay with uh, stay with this wonderful program. I don't have any uh, um, nausea or anything like that from from taking naltrexone. So I'm uh, I guess I'm just one of the one of the fortunate people. Maybe I don't know that. Uh, yeah, maybe God was on my side there. But it's a drinking for you know so many decades of, of drowning myself in in alcohol and now uh, and now enjoying. Uh, with with family and friends, which is a good thing because I, I have three grown kids and uh, and a wife and everybody uh, everybody drinks everybody drinks under control. They're all just regular uh, normal normal drinkers. So it's nice to be a part of that crowd. I feel a part of that crowd. Before I always felt like an alien. You know, with AA, you can't you gotta you can't do this because you've got this uh, that disease. Well, they call it a disease, but they, uh, but, uh, so yeah. So now it's a. Uh, uh, the whole new life, uh, really, uh, really. Uh, TSM has uh, really, uh, I think, saved my life. It's given me a, a whole new uh, outlook. It changes the way you, uh, the way you feel about things. The way you know, it changes the, you know, your whole, you know, your habits, and uh, you, know, you develop good habits. And your your daily life is not consumed around alcohol. And the secretiveness of alcohol and the hiding and the all the, you know, what can I get my next drink? Let me, uh, here's a party going on. I got to go back out to the refrigerator in the garage and have another drink because I'm not, uh, 
I'm not feeling the way I'd like to feel that I'm not part of the party because I need to, I need six drinks in order to feel part of the party. So that we, so that that's that's gone. So it's just uh, it's delightful. Well, that's wonderful. So I want to come back to um, to various things that you've mentioned along your story. So from the time you first started drinking alcohol through you said it it didn't become problematic until your 40s like would you say that your drinking now has returned to the way it was prior to when it became a problem or is it even better now no it's probably even better now yeah because in my yeah in my 20s and 30s i was uh, you know uh, I wasn't just having a couple of drinks. I would, you know, I would be very comfortable having three or four beers, and and, and so uh, there wasn't the uh, there wasn't the blackouts. There wasn't the uh, the fall down drunk uh, type stuff. I, although I did, didn't really do that. I kind of just uh, you know I fell asleep on the couch and that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would say it's it, it's it's returned to. Uh, Probably like in the beginning, like the teenage years, the teenage years, the early twenties, where you would just go and uh, go to uh, uh, a bar or back in back in the day, go to a discotheque or something, and then then just and just have one or two drinks and whatnot, and uh, and be satisfied with that. Just be a, be able to go and nurse a drink. That's what I'm doing now. Like I'll have, I'll have a beer or a wine, and I'm there, and I'm still drinking it uh, for a long time. And, and my wife is drinks very slowly. And when we go out to a restaurant, she'll be drinking her wine well, along with a meal. And and I'll have a beer and, I'm, and I'm, the beer will still be there. It was just the other day. The beer will still be there and the meal is gone already. So the it's a whole, it's just a whole different way of, uh, the, uh, yeah, TSM has just kind of changed uh, my whole uh, uh, desire you know, for uh, for drinking, it's not. It's not there. The, all that the chugging and all of that stuff is not there. There. Now we spend time actually just uh, sipping it and uh, and enjoying it, having a conversation. And so it's it's not. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so so yeah, returning to uh, before there was ever really a problem with alcohol. So probably uh, you know, going back to uh, back to a teenager when I used to just watch my my father drink and uh, and. He died of alcoholism. Lived a long life, lived to be 85, 86. But he was, uh, 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 yeah, no, uh, no stranger to alcohol. It was just, just the, the way of life as, as we grew up. But probably, yeah, back to that time frame when I was just uh, looking, uh, looking at other other people drinking, and then saying, "I'm, I'm not really going to do that." And, uh, and so, not, not really, uh, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't all consuming in life that that, that alcohol was. Uh, is telling me I mean, what to do every day. So we said, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if that answers. I'm just, yeah, back to, uh, yeah, back to a simpler time. Yeah, back to before I was 40, probably 20s, you know, teens. Um, yeah. As things started picking up, you described yourself uh, uh, in a period of time beginning in your 40s as a functional alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Now, along the way, I'm sure how much of looking back and recognizing that that was when the problems were beginning to escalate is hindsight. And how much of that did you recognize at the time? I prob probably recognized it uh, more as I uh, you know, worked for the phone company and as I was traveling and, 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 and flying for you know var various uh, various places along the uh, Along the East Coast, and and then going to uh, you know, became a frequent flyer member, and, and then and then getting into the clubs clubs. In this case, it was Delta, and be able to, being able to drink for free. So when you're able to drink for free, that's when things kind of really really take off. And uh, so more, yeah, just um, drinking during the. Uh, the evening hours, but then the attraction too, as you as you're traveling and you get to a club early in the morning, and uh, and alcohol is available, and then you find uh, okay, the, 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 let's experiment with something like a Bloody Mary, and uh, and then you go. Uh, you, it's not like you're doing it all the time, but 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 you're doing that, so you're kind of you're kind of really crossing crossing this line into uh, into uh, he heavy drinking, and you uh, so it's a uh, yeah the um, 
the working, the uh, the availability of uh, frequent flying and, and free drinks, and that the attraction with that, the allure of that. Uh, I think, think, think that was the beginning of really course. And then, so did I recognize that? Yeah, I recognized that, but uh, I enjoyed the. I enjoy drinking. I had a lot. Your recovery journey is uniquely yours. When you have questions or need guidance reaching your goals, there's a TSM coach for you at your Sinclair Method Coaching. Book a coaching session today. I had, I had a lot of lot of fun drinking, and uh, even though uh, it's uh, you know. You, the interaction, I guess, you know, with my wife, with that in the evenings isn't, you know, isn't the greatest because that's uh, because alcohol is, is kind of is kind of taken over your life. So that's uh, that's pretty yeah, I recognized it, but I just, yeah, uh, that's what I that's what I, the monster had me. That's what I wanted to do. And how long would you say went between when you thought that? There, there might be something concerning about your drinking and actually trying to do something about it. Yeah, no, the only, yeah, the only time I, uh, I, I sought to do something about it actually was when, uh, when I, uh, when I lost the, that job that I had, that was, I was in my, uh, I think it was about 46, um, uh, you're padding the expense account, doing the you're doing you know, fraudulent things. So, uh, would that alcohol have a problem? If, if have an issue with that? Probably, because you're you know, you're, uh, you're you're doing things uh, that you uh, that you shouldn't be doing, and, and you're using alcohol as a crutch to uh, to get you through uh, that. Okay, so it's it's not so bad. Let me have another drink, and I'll and I'll look to forget about that. So, uh, um, and then from there. Uh, when that happened, uh, then and then going to AA, and then, so then with AA, that's uh, that's when you're arresting the uh, your uh, alcoholism for uh, however long you can stay there to to do that. So that's uh, so it was really uh, job related and losing that, and then uh, and then going then going to do that, and then uh, yeah, yeah, definitely my wife realized yeah you have yeah you have a problem with alcohol, uh, but she. Uh, she kind of went along with that. She didn't, not enabling me, but she, uh, yeah, she, uh, she let me go because uh, all those years, because you're always, uh, you have a job, you have, you're still raising a family, you know, you're a, you're a functioning alcoholic. Did you ever feel like other than AA, you just didn't know what else to do about it? Uh, it do you feel like the lack of viable options for v- for treatment that include either harm reduction or abstinence, did that lack of options cause you to feel like you delayed seeking help? Yeah, I didn't know of any other options. Yeah, be, be, beside AA, uh, that's uh, um, that's uh, that's all the all the all the people did. I didn't I didn't experiment with looking at. Uh, didn't know about Neltrexon. Didn't know about the, any other. Uh, we're, we're in a that's that's the world we we live in and kind of still live in, if you will. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I uh, I just chose to continue to uh, to drink. I thought you know try try AA. AA was good, and uh, but then if, if, when things got better, uh, bounce back, get another job again. Everything's uh, and then. Uh, I you know, told my wife going back to drinking. She wasn't. She wasn't, uh, of course, wild about that. And then, uh, and then that kind of uh, takes off again. It's a, it's kind of a, you know, a, a progression. So maybe you're not drinking as much, but then over time, then it uh, it keeps on keeps on going, as as we all know. And so let's let's talk a little bit about the impact that your wife's support has had on your TSM journey. Talk a little bit more about how. Uh, how she was able to help you along and how, how did she support you on this process? Yes. As I was saying, yes. She, uh, so talking to her about it and then uh, we spent, uh, well, I had already seen it, but then I got to uh, show up Claudia Christian's tech tape. Let's look at the tech tape, do that. And then after that, then we, uh, 
and we went and uh, yeah, we didn't buy it because we, we just we just rented uh, one little pill and, uh, and saw that uh, a couple of times. So that was between those two things. That was very interesting for her because she could then this. But with the one little pill, she could see the because uh, it uh, it is very good with showing the different um, uh, scenarios in life that, that this, what this person was going through, what that person was going through. There, there was you know, like four different families and so, so it was, uh, it was, it was very well done. So she thought that was very interesting. Um, and then, and then with finding TSM and then with finding uh, Bruce Rose, she said, you know, she, you know, she didn't have a problem with, uh, with getting on with Bruce Rose. And, and I think that helped her to learn. It helped us, to, our regular regular participants to learn more too because he's very informative and uh, to uh, talk all about uh, AUD and how it's uh, and how it's uh, a, a malfunction in the in the brain a neurological imbalance in the brain and and and, and how uh, alcoholism led led you to a, toward that and how uh, and then how TSM how naltrexone and drinking over time the several months then then reverses that effect, those neural pathways, and brings you back to, to become a, to become a normal drinker again. So, so with her, with, with, her, with, um, with uh, Bruce Rose explaining that to her, and then I kept, kept talking to her as well, and, uh, uh, and she uh, she just learned uh, she learned more about it as I talked to her all, over time. Uh, she uh, she really un understands it. So so that was very beneficial for me, for her to to take a, a real great interest in it and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 feel you know over. She's still doubtful. Well, now she's not doubtful. Now it's been but now it's been a year. <laughs> she was just still doubtful whether it's whether it was really going to take whether it was really going to uh, going to work. Uh, so as I was saying before, with you know with then. We're watching Jeopardy and whatever. And so I'm drinking this water, water glasses full of scotch and whatnot. But I'm drinking in front of her. But but then then I start measuring the uh, the shots, okay. And then 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 going to beer or wine and but always drinking with her. So no more secretivism now. Now it's now you're now you're together. So that's that's free, very freeing for me. And it's also it could be pain. It was somewhat painful for her because you're seeing in the beginning like you. You're consuming, uh, you're drinking a lot of it. I'm saying, but I'm, I'm saying to myself, I'm, I'm drinking so much less. I could have been down in the basement doing that. So, but uh, oh, so uh, with her seeing that and, and then getting the support, uh, you know, from that, because she could see the see the progress. And then, yeah, you know, she's no longer uh, uh, afraid that because, uh, like as I said, you know, the beer and the wine is in the refrigerator. The scotch is. Is out in the the, the living room, uh, along with other you know other wine and stuff like that. But she's she's not concerned that I'll be uh, be uh, secretly secretly uh, uh, drinking. And, uh, and can she can see the the, uh, the 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 way I the way we drink now together? As I was saying, we go out to go out to, to a restaurant and drink, and I'm uh, and I'm actually and I'm drinking slower than her, which is like that's that's amazing, you know. But, you know when I, when I go to parties, we go to parties and uh, people pass a, a bottle of wine around the table and whatnot. And uh, I drink the way they drink, the way the noble people drink wine. You take a glass of wine and you and you sip it for an hour or so. You you do that. You just you just you learn to have a this new relationship uh, with alcohol. But working TSM, getting naltrexone into into your body, changing your brain. It becomes it becomes natural. It's not a struggle. You can you can do that. You know, there's not a desire to chug the drink anymore. You can actually just go in and, and enjoy the drink. It's, it's wonderful. Talk about uh, how critical communication was with you, between yourself and your wife, as you needed to communicate what you were going through with the Sinclair method with the alcohol cravings and addiction, knowing that this was also difficult for your wife to see you continue to drink and and struggle, even, especially in the beginning. So talk about that. Was, that was very important. Um, yeah, yeah, she was definitely, uh, 
definitely scared, definitely look, looking at, uh, in the beginning, drinking water glasses of scotch. Uh, um, uh, so she was, she was, she was fearful. Um, but I was telling her, this is, this is what I'm doing here. You know, I'm taking, I'm taking naltrexone. I'm waiting at least an hour until the, until the, the whole process. And she, and she knew this. She knew the process, but still uh, uh, leery of, uh, of uh, you know, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Um, but, but doing that that every day, communicating you know, with her. So here, here we are at the uh, having dinner together. You know, whatever, watching watching Jeopardy and uh, and. and uh, and then I'm I'm, I'm drinking. Uh, maybe she, sometimes she's she'd be drinking with me, or uh, some wine, and sometimes not. But uh, uh, I'm telling her, yeah, that, that that I'm working this, and she could see the uh, she could see the reduction over time. You, you know, in the beginning, you're you're filling up a couple of water glasses full of scotch. You go back and get another one, but uh, over time, it's it's getting less. Um, and then and then she's watching me. She's leery of the whole thing. And then I. And then I started measuring drinks. Okay, but so um, I'm measuring drinks. But there's this. Uh, so there's not the the secretiveness of that is is now out in the open. I'm not uh, I'm not in the, the background pouring pouring three shots into a glass. What I'm actually showing her here's the uh, so there's the communication. You're 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 uh, you're pouring a, a shot, and you and she can see. And then she'll be asking me. So how many? How many shots was that? That you wanted one or two, and that's who okay. because she wanted to, uh, yeah. she wanted to see me move along uh, with this. So, uh, so that yeah, the, the communication, the openness, uh, and uh, she saw the desire that I had, and the same the desire that she had that there was that this was going to work because she wasn't, uh, she wasn't sure. I wasn't sure either, but but as we, uh, you know, were you know. It, just to, everything out in the open is what uh, is what is what really uh, got me on the path, and then moving away from spirits and beer and wine, as I said, too, that was a uh, uh, made made more and more progress. But 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 just uh, drinking together. I, I uh, in the beginning I was still having 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 the drink and then and then leaving, and then coming over to the computer, and she said, "Let's uh, let's continue to drink together." So that communication, so that that so so that she could see that. I'm getting away from the old old way of of hiding and all this stuff, and now you're now you're out in the open. Let's uh, let's let's do this together, because it. Uh, and I think it's yeah, having the support of a spouse is uh, was was critical. I think uh, I probably still could have been successful with TSM, but it would have taken me a lot longer. Especially with the, I don't know how it would, would have worked, you know, secretly drinking in the, in the basement. I, I, I don't think that could that would have lasted anyway. That's uh, over time. But uh, there's a lot of people that uh, do this uh, alone. I really I really feel for them. So it's uh, it's uh, it's great to have uh, have some support, someone someone to talk to, and uh, uh, as you move along. Well, what helps, of course, is uh, you know. Um, is all these TSM meetup groups too, so you can get to share with uh, all individuals because everybody's in a different, uh, a different position in, in life. But a lot of people are alone, and they are, uh, and they're sharing. Uh, this is what I'm doing. But anyway, with my wife, it was uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, communicating with her, and then she got more and more comfortable, and then, uh, and then, uh, now it's a. Uh, now it's not an issue at all. Now it's I really get to drink now at a, you know, be, you know, a couple of times a week, uh, and it's really just uh, just drinking with her, or or we go out to a restaurant, or we meet with friends and uh, you know, at a party or something like that. But uh, but even when I go to these parties, it's not uh, the the desire is to yeah it is to over drink, but it just doesn't happen. It's a uh, you're just satisfied with the with a couple of drinks. Just keep on taking. You just remain diligent with uh, you know, take, taking an Altrex on every uh, every every time you drink, so that you can uh, you can keep this AUD brain uh, dormant and, uh, forever and, and enjoy this uh, and enjoy this life. As I was saying, that the taste is for me. I'm, I'm fortunate. The taste of the scotch, the taste of the beer, and the wine is is the same as it was. Before, yeah, when I was in the AUD uh, 
grips uh, for many decades. And many people along their Sinclair Method journey have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Was there any point along the way? Uh, it, I mean, it sounds like you had a very short journey to your freedom. Mm -hmm. um, well, February through August, I think you said, um, right. which, which many would find very quick. Um, it's pretty average for someone who has a proper support system. Um, but, um, but still some people will struggle for a couple of years before they feel like they finally have that freedom yes. in that amount of time. Did you, did you have any situation that came up where you wondered, Oh my God, is this actually working or, is what have I done in in trying this? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, just for what, I guess about one of what you call these early responders. It was just a, a gradual uh, reduction, and then uh, and then working the everything that uh, Katie Lane and other people talk about the the, the mindfulness. So uh, you know, think about your drinking, you know, getting, getting away from chugging and the mind. So let's, let's, let's enjoy, let's enjoy the drink and, uh, uh, and go from there. Uh, um, not having, uh, I know a lot of people talk about with, with, with TSM and people, people's lives, they have a lot of, uh, emotional issues. Things happen, you know, divorces, deaths and families, all of this stuff. I didn't, uh, fortunately didn't, didn't have that going through that, uh, a daughter with the infertility issues and but but that that's didn't uh, drive me toward um, you know drinking more it was uh, uh, I kind of just you know, maintained uh, you know what we have it, it really didn't have um, financial issues in life things that things that you know the uh, stressful things that could uh, that could lead me toward uh, toward spiking toward the, let's let's get off of this and let's and let's go back to, to to drinking more to see if that's going to uh, to to solve the issue to, to make make you feel better. Uh, so it sounds like you were pretty well set up for success to begin with. You had a clear idea of what you wanted the Sinclair method to do. You had a base of knowledge of self improvement that you brought from two different go rounds with AA. And you had a great amount of support along with tapping into almost a mentorship with, um, with Bruce and Katie and in learning those resources for mindfulness, habit change, and keeping that open communication with your wife. Would you, would you say that, do you think that your journey on the Sinclair method would have been as smooth if you had not had any of those? Oh, definitely. It wouldn't have been as smooth, right? Yeah, it was good to, that was excellent to be, uh, the timing was, uh, couldn't have been better. You know, last, uh, last summer and uh, yeah, I kind of got addicted to Katie Lane's uh, YouTube messages because she had just talked about so, so many things with that. So I'm, I'm an avid walker, my wife and I, Fitbit, we do five miles a day. And, and so I would always be out there listening to another one of her, uh, uh, spiels about uh, about all you know, all all about AUD and uh, and so it was uh, for me it was yeah fascinating interesting and uh, and, it, and it kept me motivated to uh, to try to uh, try to move along with this uh, you know, uh, which is what yes so everything kind of fell into place so the uh, the uh, finding finding uh, Claudia Christian uh, you know the, the, the tech tape learning. Uh, uh, joining Rhea Health, uh, getting into that, finding finding Katie Lane, doing that. In fact, Katie Lane uh, then steered me toward. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but I uh, wound up uh, getting interviewed by the New York Times in, in an article on uh, on AUD. So I'm, I'm actually there on, on the people people go and uh, 
some people have called me like what they say they still don't understand that the, the, the team, they don't know they, 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 they we're still in asking in space world so they're like like what what, what happened this I, I, I describe it to them but they don't but they don't get it but uh, interviewed by yeah, new york times and an article talked about uh, talked about aud that took pictures of me and so it's still out there you go to new york times aud you'll uh, my name and you'll uh, see a picture of that so that was good with rhea health going rhea rhea health and then uh, um, and then uh, TSM meetup groups, and I became one of the uh, um, uh, sponsors. You know, one, one of the people, uh, you know, uh, uh, hosting hosting each. Uh, and so I did that for uh, for several months as well. So uh, all of that stuff is uh, uh, very instrumental in, in keeping you uh, focused, to keep you on on the program, keeping you moving along, and uh, and then. And then you get to help others. You get to share your your story, and uh, and they can tell you what what they're doing. And and uh, yeah, they were told like you know how did you how did you do it? And, well, this is how I did it. Like, and you can do it too. Like you know, so it's so it's uh, it's uh, well, all all of that was very good. And then I then I, I got away from that because other people can come on online and be host as well. I don't have to uh, as Bruce Rose says too, and he's just saying yeah. Uh, yeah, but after you after you get well, you don't have to come to these meetings anymore. So, so many, but I still every now, now and then I check in with Bruce and. Uh, and what would you say to someone who is on the fence right now, who is thinking about the Sinclair method, but they're just not sure. They're not sure if they're ready to change what alcohol is doing in their life. They're not sure if the people around them are going to be accepting of a harm reduction method. What would, what would you say to them? Well, I would, I would tell them to, uh, to explore, you know, what, what's out there, you know, to uh, look at uh, Claudia Christian's tech tape. Uh, see if you can identify with that, uh, you know, it's, you know, one, one little pill, you know, do, uh, and then from there, uh, uh, learn, learn about, learn about TSM. There's a, there's a multitude of information there too. Yeah. Uh, it was talking about their, uh, their drinking behavior. You know, how, you know, uh, what are you doing? How much are you drinking? You know, how, uh, how many days are you drinking? And then I, I would tell them my story. This is, this is what, uh, what happened to me. If you, I mean, I, I've got the, we have a, uh, not a family member, but a, a close, a close friend at the, at the beach. And he's a, He's pounding away, you know, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, 12, 12 or 18 cans of beer, you know, every day with that. And he's, uh, and he's, like, he's like around 50 years old or so. So I told his, uh, told his wife about this, uh, about the whole thing. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm available here to, uh, to talk. And, uh, and then she's seen my uh, uh, New York Times article as well about that. So, uh, so, uh, so I, I would do things like that. Here's here's the resources that are available, and uh, you can uh, look at that, and then uh, and then, then we can talk. And you, uh, I'm willing to tell you uh, how I how I struggled with uh, with alcohol for decades, and how how this is uh, how this has changed my life. And you don't have to wait until it uh, until you get DUIs, until you until you're a fall down drunk. You don't have to. You can you can address this before uh, if you. If you're having six or seven drinks every day, uh, there's uh, there's something wrong with that, and, and, and this can this uh, TSM can, uh, can 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 change your relationship with alcohol before it becomes a serious problem. I love that because I mean, let's face it: for many people, rock bottom is death, and there's there's no reason to let it get that far before because you don't have to you you literally do not have to wait until your life your relationship your jobs are ruined before you can make a change this tsm quick tip is brought to you by the c3 foundation with support from our sponsor alcure Claudia, is a drink log really necessary for accountability? It makes people do so much better on TSM. It really does. That's just a fact. But it's also good because you can see your progress. People forget how much they drink in a month. But if you see it in black and white, you can see what triggered you on what day. Oh, it was the Super Bowl. I drank a lot. Um, or also, am I decreasing 
my units. What were you doing that day? What were you doing that day? And it's also just an act of mindfulness, like you said, and accountability, which is so important while you're on the Sinclair method. So keep that drink log up to date.